Assalamu alaikum and very good morning students. So we meet again for another module for under fall under data communication and networking course. I am Dr. Shafi Bauzi Kamar Zaman delivering you. So thank you for your support for all my videos and I expect you guys to stay up until the end of the course. So this is uh, for today is module 6. So we have skipped some module previously and now I'm coming back to module 6 because this is a part of our syllabus which uh, we have to arrange the syllabus according to our assessment. So today okay we are covering the module 6 okay which under the data link layer. So for those who have subscribed my channel I would like to say thank you for your subscription and your likes. So for those who haven't subscribed, please do subscribe my channel so it will keep you posted about new videos later on that I will publish uh, in the future. So let's start our course. Okay, so we are covering the data link layer. So we have started with the Ethernet layer before. So now let's take a look. We have started with the Ethernet layer, but we still haven't uh, figure out what is actually the details of the within the data link layer. <coughs> so what is the basically the purpose of the data link layer? So the data link layer is basically the layer okay, that is responsible for communication between end device network interface cards. So it means that for those who have uh, their uh, uh, network ID inside a, net, uh, a host that has network ID inside a network, so they should have a network interface card. So usually it based on how the connection is. So some of them have network interface card depending on the wireless or an Ethernet connection, RJ45 Ethernet connection, or any other functions, even Bluetooth or something like that. So it allows an upper layer protocol basically to access the physical media physical layer media and encapsulate layer 3 packets which is the IPv4 or IPv6 into the layer 2 frames. So layer 3 is upper and layer 2 is lower. So <clears throat> it also performs error detection and rejects corrupted frames. So IP packet before it is uh, sent to the internet uh, to through the created uh, sent through a network uh, layer okay to add the layer so they need to have the the protocols that have then recognized the destination location and uh, which means that a device that next connected to them so this is based on the network interface card okay so basically okay based on the ieee standards so here we have the data link layer so physical layer usually at the bottom this is the layer one okay data link is layer two okay so and above it we have a network layer so network layer is where you have an ip, IP packet and the physical layer is where you have the internet frame so data link layer where is it located so the data link layer is located here Okay, they basically they have two types of sublayer, which is what we call LNC sublayer, which is logical link control, and also MAC sublayer, which is the media access control. So the LNC sublayer here they communicate between the networking software from the upper layers here in the network and the device hardware in the lower layers. Okay, they communicate between them. Okay, mediator between these two layers. So the max sub layer, okay, this is the one who responsible for data encapsulation and media access control. So in this layer, okay, they encapsulate all this information into an Ethernet frame, okay, and with some media access control before being sent through a relevant channel. So, in order to provide access to the media, so packets, they exchange between nodes, okay, when they change between nodes, they may experience numerous data link layers and media transition, okay. So, at each hop along the path, okay, a router performs four basic layer two functions, okay, a router performs four basic layer two functions, 
when each hops from one place to another. So they, the functions are accept a frame from the network medium, okay, they, they encapsulate the frame to expose the encapsulated packet, and then they re-encapsulate the packet into a new frame. And then they re-forward the new frame on the medium of the next network segment. So at the next frame for each hop, okay, from the destination, uh, data destination, data source to the data destination, okay, there are a lot of hops among routers, okay. So basically for each router, they will de-encapsulate, remove the header for the media access control, and replace with a new header that consistent with the next uh, hop, okay. So we call it based on hop, so easier to understand. So the standards within the data link layer, okay, they are provided by these four institutions. So we have this IEEE, which is under Institute of Electric and Electronic Engineers. Okay, and then ITU is where you have International Telecommunication Union, ISO, which is International Organization of Standardization, and also ANSI, which is American National Standards Institute. Okay. So when we look at topologies, okay, so topologies of a network, they are divided into two, basically. We have what we call a physical topology and, okay, logical topology. So what is topology exactly? So topology is actually the arrangement and relationship of the network device and the interconnection between them, okay? The relationship between device and interconnection between them. So the two types of topology, which is the physical topology, okay, and logical topology. So the physical topology shows physical connections and how devices are interconnected, okay. Uh, so interconnection and how devices are connected, connected. So logical topology, okay, they identifies the virtual connection between device using device interfaces and also the IP addressing scheme. So physical topology usually they related more towards how the arrangement of the device in the real world, okay? Comparing to logical topology who arrange the device according to networks that we created, the subnets and everything. So when we talk about one topology, okay, wide area network topology, okay, there are three common physical one topology. So the first one is what we call a point-to-point, -point. the second one hub and spoke, and the third one is mesh. So point-to-point, -point, okay, the simple one, the most simplest one, consisting a permanent link between two points, okay, two routers, for example, okay. So and then hub and spoke, okay, which basically a similar to star topology where a central site interconnects branch sites through the point-to-point -point links, okay. We have a lot of branch and then they have hub okay in the middle and then this hub is connected to another hub okay in the in the next uh, location so this is where we have a hub and spoke okay and then the third one is where we have what we call mesh so mesh provides high availability but requires every end system to be connected to every other end system means that we have three three routers for example okay three hosts for example Okay, so these three hosts must connect to each other. Like for example, router 1 or host 1 connected to host 2 and host 3 directly. Host 2 must connect to host 1 and host 3 directly. Host 3 must connect to host 2 and host 1 directly. Okay, uh, so it must have all this connection. So in this case, okay, like for example, point to point, okay, as I mentioned, okay, connecting two nodes. Okay, they can uh, they may not share the media with other hosts and because all frames on the media can only travel to or from the two nodes point to point one protocols is very simple okay so it's very simple so for example LAN topology that we have here okay so end device on LANs okay they are typically interconnected using a star or extended topology like this extended star topology so star and extended star topologies, they are easy to install and very scalable and easy to troubleshoot, okay? So other than that, we have a bus topology and ring topology, okay? 
So early at the net, okay, and legacy token ring technologies, they provide this bus topology and ring topology. Okay, so bus topology, okay, all end system chain together and exterminate on each other or on each end. Okay, and ring, each end system is connected to its respective neighbor to form a ring. Okay, so this is ring topology. Okay, so within the topology itself, okay, there are two types of communication. The first one is what we call a half duplex communication, and the second one is full duplex communication. Okay, you have two hosts, we have the half duplex communication and full duplex communication. So half duplex communication, they only allows one device to send or receive at a time. Okay, on a shared medium. So you have one cable, one device send at one time this send receive this send this receive okay so they use on once uh, on wireless lands and legacy bus topologies with uh, they are used on wireless lands and legacy bus topologies with the ethernet bus uh, with the ethernet hubs okay sorry with the ethernet hubs so next we have full duplex communications okay so full duplex communication, they allow two-way communication simultaneously. Okay, they transmit and receive it on the shared medium. So if they host one and host two, they can send at the same time and they will receive at the same time. Okay, so most internet switches, okay, they operate in the full duplex mode. And then in terms of the mode topologies, we have access control method as well. So access control methods, we have two types. So we have contention-based access and also control access. So the contention-based address, okay, so basically all nodes must operate, okay, in half duplex. So competing for use of the medium. Okay, they must compete for the use of the medium. So example are, okay, for example, in this case, you can see in the slide, so carrier sends multiple access with collision detector detection CSMA or CD are used on legacy bus topology at the net. And carrier sends multiple access with collision avoidance CSMA CA okay are used on wireless LANs. Okay, so this one is quotation based access. So control access, okay, this one, deterministic access where each node has its own time on the medium. So you have uh, chances on each uh, PC to have access to the network. So use on legacy networks such as token ring and also ArcNet, okay. So this is an example of the access control method, okay. So if you look at the contention-based access, CSMA and CD, okay, Used by legacy Ethernet LAN, okay, CSMA, okay, they, they operate in half duplex modes where only one device sends and receive at the same time. They use collision detection process to govern when a device can send and what happens if multiple devices send at the same time, okay. So the collision detection process and device Devices transmitting simultaneously will result in a signal collision on the shared, device, shared media. So device will detect the collision and device will wait a random period of time for retransmitting the data. So this is based on contention-based access. Okay. Okay, so next we have CSMA CA. Okay, so this one is used for our wireless LANs. Okay, so it operates in half duplex modes where only one device sends and receives at the same time. Uses a collision avoidance process to govern when a device can send and what happens if multiple devices send at the same time. So this one, even though you see that it uses half duplex, since our network is quite fast, okay, you, you almost cannot feel it, okay, that it is taking a lot of time in getting connection for a lot of people using the wireless lab. So CSMACA, okay, the collision avoidance process is when transmitting, okay, device also include the time duration needed for the transmission. So other device on the shared medium receive the time duration information and know how long the medium will be unveiled. So they will like queue. So for those who are using it, they can put in time, okay, they can make a queue, okay, what who will use it later on. Okay. 
Next, if we look at the data link frame, okay, so the frame basically they have three parts. Okay, we have header, we have data, and we have a trailer. Okay, so data is encapsulated by the data link layer with a header and a trailer from a frame. Okay, they form a frame. So the field of the header and trailer vary according to the data link layer protocol. Different protocol, they have a different length of header and different length of trailer. So the amount of control information carried with the, within the frame varies according to access control information and also the logical topology involved. So if you look at the frame, the internet frame from the data link layer, okay, you have header and you have a trailer. So in the header, you have what this is, frame start uh, identifier addressing Okay, which is stores and destination nodes, start. Okay, so identify the encapsulated layer 3 protocol. Okay, what kind of layer 3 protocol you are expecting. And then you have a control, which identify the flow control services. Then we have this data. You have error detection. Okay, uh, so this is data is uh, behave like a payload. And then this error detection, they use to determine transmission errors and also a frame stop notification, the frame stop identifiers. So if you look at a layer 2 address here that we have, okay, so it's also uh, referred to as a physical address. Uh, so this is basically what we call a MAC address, okay. So it contained in the frame header, yeah, and used only for local delivery of a frame on the link okay so it's a local delivery basically it's basically it's like uh, for one hop one hop of transmission so for other hops like for example you reach one device is haven't uh, this is uh, reached the final destination yet so they will hop with changing the le level two header okay so this one okay they will update uh, they'll be updated by each device that forwards the frame. So in this case, okay, in L2, okay, in here, so you see that destination and source and IC is based on source and destination here. In this case, okay, we'll change the front header and change the source and destination to this one and this one. And same for R2, it okay, will change the source and destination from this one to this one until it reach the final destination. So it's not that difficult actually. So when you look at the LAN and WAN frames, okay, okay, a logical topology and physical media determine the data link protocol use. So basically the protocol use beside the Ethernet, 802.11 wireless, point to point, high level data link control and also frame relay. So each protocol performs media access control for specified logical topologies. Okay, so that's all for today. Hopefully, okay, you guys uh, can catch up with me in this video. So I'll see you guys in uh, my next video. So thank you very much for supporting me. So hopefully you will keep with me, subscribe my channel and drop me a few likes. So I see you guys in my next video. Stay safe and bye-bye.